Okay guys, um, I got a, a late birthday present for myself today in the, uh, from UPS. Uh, it's the Auto Art Mad Max 1 uh, car. Funny thing is, there's zero artwork on the box. I mean, nothing. The only thing that even tells you what's in the box, I'll spin it around here, is on the end of the box. And it says Ford XB Falcon tuned version, black interceptor. Nothing Mad Max on the outside of this box. Here's the barcode. In case anybody wants the uh, part number for this particular model, it's 72775. And I'll open it up, pull it out, set the camera down for a second. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to read that or not, but this is the only place I've seen any reference to Mad Max. It says, 118th Mad Max Interceptor, this side up. The part number on the foam shell, 72745. Pull the top off. It's a good looking model. The paint is really, really nice. Um, I already took the liberty of undoing the screws on the bottom side so I can get it out of the clamshell. And here's the car. Let me set, set it down for a second. Get the clamshell out of the way. See, it's got good detail on the wheels. Although they're flat black, which I thought they should be gloss, I believe. Um, as you can see on that fender, guard for my Australian friends, there is no Mad Max maintain right badge at all. Also on the rear of the car, should say MFP, and it does not. Which leads me to believe that this car is not officially licensed by the studios. Funny thing is, is that the much cheaper version of this that's coming out sometime early next year, unless it gets bumped back again, the green light interceptor is got all the badges and the MFP on the license plate. So I'm not quite sure what happened with the auto art and the studios. But they must have decided, hell with it, we're going to produce it anyway. They already had 95% of this car done as the Road Warrior car. Realistically, the only thing they had to do is put a back window back in it, the interior back in it, trunk lid, and rear spoiler, which already existed on other cars. The blower, I'll turn it around, the blower looks to be correct for the first move, from the first movie. Really, really nice detail on this. Headlight covers, it's got the, the full front fascia, the lower, lower bumper treatment that the Road Warrior cars didn't have. The first version of the Road Warrior car had the nose, and I believe on a second version you could remove the nose, as it appeared right after the very first scene when Max crashed the car against the bad guys. And here's the zoomies. The underside of the car has got pretty decent detailing. Um, again, most of this is a carryover from the Road Warrior car. Now the zoomies are different in the tip details so not exactly sure what they did to change that but they did as you can see through the windshield it does have the blue beacon 
It also has, I can move my hands out of the way, open the door. Hopefully you'll be able to see, there's the radio up in the, up in the ceiling of the, the car. And I haven't been able to see whether or not, it doesn't appear to have the decal in the steering wheel of the picture of uh, Jesse and Sprague. But you can see in there that red spot, that is the blower on off switch. And it is, it is present. So, set it down here a second again. Close the door. Trunk opens and sorry that the lighting is really piss poor but there's a little bit better view it is fully flocked uh, so it looks like carpeting which is a nice detail I don't know because you never saw the inside of the trunk of the car in any of the movies uh, by the time the second movie rolled around there was a bunch of gas tanks in there and junk piled up so pretty much pretty figure the carpet had to be gone um, now, again, on the movie car, I don't know if it was present or not, but this one actually has, you can see those lines, has a rear window defroster. It's pretty nice. A pretty rare, uh, option, I believe, back in the day in a real car. So, let me open up the passenger door and show you what's inside there. Okay. And there's the beacon. It's got nice detailing on the door. It's all got the GT Falcon interior. Set her back down here. This model came with no certificate of authenticity. Yeah, easy for me to say. No COA. Um, there's no mention anywhere of a production quantity. This could be one of a million for all I know. Um, so the values on this car is going to be hard to really guess because there's nothing to ga gauge it against. There could be a hundred, there could be a thousand, there could be ten thousand, a hundred thousand. Nobody knows, um, other than auto art, and they're not saying at least not yet. This little tool here, auto art provides a little key for being able to open up the hood on this particular car. You really don't need it for the trunk, but some cars you do. Um, show you what's up under the hood. And it has some pretty nice detailing, really. Um, and it should. I mean, this is not a cheap model by any stretch. Uh, and as you can see, it's got, I'm trying to get the lighting better, it's got what appears to be real uh, automotive style hood hinges instead of those dogleg styles that were on most of the early models that were out. So, I mean, they, they, all these top-end and even some of the lower-end die-cast companies really stepped up their game in detail. Um, the, like I said, the prices they're asking for these cars, it needs to be. Now, you can see on the hood, it does have the proper satin black, over-gloss black, with the pinstripes separating in there and then it also that runs down the lower fascia that's also flat black you can see it there pretty well up over the wheel well down across the rocker and you can see it still it does have the pinstripes so they did keep that feature uh, across the back of the car is all satin black as we always call it the black on black or the bob um, all in all, I think it's a great model. Um, I had a custom one made years ago off the Road Warrior car, and this one is, you know, for a factory car, is is every bit as good. I mean, the other one, I paid a hell of a lot more money for it a lot longer ago. Um, had I known this car was finally ever going to see the light of day, I probably wouldn't have bought it, but I did. And I wanted to get this one too. And I also have the green light one ordered. So, all in all, um, pretty happy with it. If uh, you're in the market for it, 
I got this one through Supercar Collectibles Limited. Their web uh, address is supercar1.com. Uh, also, the Diecast Model Warehouse has them as well. Their website is diecastmodelwarehouse.com. Uh, many of the places that have these, and these just just hit the stores. So, if you're looking for them, um, don't get ripped off on eBay. Um, these things are running. I've seen them as as low as 179. This one was 189, but the shipping was only three bucks. So yes, it's a lot of money, and it's not for everybody. And if you can afford it and you want it, go for it. Do it. Just don't get ripped off. Don't pay over two hundred dollars for these cars because you don't have to. They're still available. They just hit the market. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And maybe I'll do more of these in the future if people so care to hear me yap. See ya.